Hey everyone, my name is Dave and today I'm going to show you how I made this apothecary style cabinet. The cabinet's going to be made from cherry and poplar for the secondary wood, and I'll also be using these pulls that I picked up from Amazon. The build starts with milling a cherry down to its proper size, and I'll do this over at the miter saw cutting everything to the right length. Then heading over to the joiner to get one square edge and one flat face. Then the boards can be run through the planer to get them to the correct thickness and then rip to the right width over at the table saw. I'll repeat this process for all the boards until I have the case sides, the dividers, and the drawer fronts all milled out. The first bit of joinery on this is going to be making the dovetails for the case and I'll use my moxen vise for this process. To start laying out the dovetails, I need the thickness of the pin boards or the top and bottom boards, and then I can transfer that dimension over to the tail boards. Next I'll measure the thickness of the tail boards and transfer that dimension over to the pin boards. These should all be the same since I milled them all up at the same time, but I normally take this measurement anyways just to be safe. To get the spacing for the tails, I normally use two dividers. One of them sets the space from the outside edge to the first tail, and then the larger set of dividers sets the spacing between tails. Once the spacing has been figured out, the rest of the tail can be laid out with either a bevel gauge and a combination square, or a dovetail marker like I'm using here. I'll use a pencil to darken in all the lines that I made earlier and mark out the waist. To cut out the tails, I'll use a dovetail saw and rip down following the lines I created earlier, trying to stay on the waist side of the line. The important part of this process is to make sure that you follow the line that's square across the top of the board. If you don't match the angle down on the tail, it's not that big a deal because we're going to be making the pin boards to match the tail boards. Once the profile of the tails have been cut out, then the bulk of the waist can be removed with a coping saw. The waist on the ends gets removed with a dovetail saw since it makes a straighter cut and leaves a better finish. The same process is repeated for the remaining three sets of tails. Once the bulk of the material has been sawn away, then the rest of the waist can be removed with a chisel and a mallet over at the workbench. A small amount of material is removed at a time, slowly working up to the layout lines created earlier. The last step with the tails is to pare away a small amount of material up to the layout line on the inside of the tail board, and this creates a small shoulder that makes it easy to register this board up against the pin board when we lay out to mark the pins. Next the pin board can be marked out by putting it in the moxen vise, putting the tail board up against it, registering against the shoulder that was created earlier, and then tracing out with a marking knife the shape of the tails. Once the tails have been traced onto the pin board, I can use a combination square and a knife to mark out the depth of the cut. Just like on the tail board, a pencil is used to darken in the lines so it's easier to see where to make the cut. Once everything's traced out, I can start making the cuts with the dovetail saw. It's important here to make sure that the lines across the top of the board and the vertical lines are followed perfectly. If they're not, it can create gaps in the joint when everything's put together. Then just like on the tail boards, remove most of the waste with the coping saw, come back in with a chisel and clean up to the layout lines. To reduce the chance of any wood splintering out on the show face of the case, I usually start by chiseling from the outside in and go about halfway down, then flip the board over and remove the rest of the waste from the other side. Once the dovetails are complete, the case can start to be laid out for some stop dados that will hold the dividers. I didn't want to be able to see the dado grooves on the outside of the case. I thought it would be too busy looking and not as refined. So I'll be making the grooves this way, which is a little bit more complicated of a process, but not too hard with a router. The first step is to lay out the grooves on the top, bottom, and sides. 
Next I need to create a fence for the router to run along. I'll do this by taking a block with one straight edge and gluing it with, uh, to a piece of hardboard and then hitting it with a couple of brads. I'll leave the hardboard a little bit oversized and then I'll take the router and trim away all the excess. This way my router bit runs right up alongside of the hardboard. Now a second board can be added that's 90 degrees to the fence and this will register up against the case side ensuring that you get a straight cut when you make the groove. Now the fence just needs to be clamped up against the case side and it can go ahead and start creating the groove. The only other thing worth noting is that there's a line on the fence to act as a guide to where to stop the router so I don't blow through the front of the case. Once the fence is made and the first grooves cut, it takes no time at all to run through all the grooves that need to be made on the case sides and the top and bottom. Since the router bit leaves a round profile at the end of the dado, I'll go ahead and square everything up with a chisel. The next step is to apply some glue to all the pin boards and then assemble the case. Even though I was able to dry fit the assembly without using a mallet, the glue swelled up the pins a little bit and I had to tap everything in place. Applying a couple clamps got rid of any gaps in the joint and then it was just a quick check to make sure everything was still square. After the case had a couple hours to dry, I went ahead and created the rabbit that would hold the backboard in place. There are plenty of ways to make the rabbit for the back of the case, and the way I decided to do it was just to use a 3 8 inch rabbiting bit and run it around the inside of the back of the case. Using a router bit does round the corners when you're making the rabbit, so you could either cut the plywood or backing board that you're going to use to have the rounded corners on it, or to square them up like I did here using a chisel. Now that the glue's had plenty of time to dry, I'm going to go ahead and use a hand plane to cut the pins and tails flush to the case sides top and bottom. Being able to remove the middle of my bench on the split top rubot and use it as a stop to hold the case in place while I'm using a hand plane is a really nice advantage. The dividers for the case are going to be made from 3 8 inch thick cherry and I'll start by cutting them to length at the miter saw. The dividers are going to be recessed from the front of the case but they are going to come up past the groove created earlier so I'll mark all those out using a chisel or a marking knife with the dividers installed into the case. Now two notches can be sawn out of the front of the dividers so that they can slide up past the dados in the case. The same process is repeated for all the remaining horizontal dividers. The dados for the vertical dividers were laid out using a combination square lined up against the existing grooves on the case bottoms and top. The location was transferred to each horizontal shelf and then I could move over to the router jig that I made earlier to create the dados. Just like on the case, these are going to be stop dados, so I'll finish the cut about a quarter inch before the end of the board. Once all the dados are complete, the vertical dividers can be made using the same steps as the horizontal shelves. With all the shelves and dividers complete, the entire assembly gets sanded down with some 220 grit paper. Next it's time to glue up the entire assembly. Glue gets applied to all the vertical grooves and all the horizontal grooves as well. Then I can slide all the dividers into place. The next step is to start working on the drawers. I'll cut the cherry to its rough length and width and then I'll use the case as a template to lay out where the drawer fronts are going to go. Once the drawer fronts are laid out, over at the miter saw I can chop everything to a size. Each drawer has to be individually fit, so I'll just work on them one at a time, making sure to use one board for each row so I get that continuous grain. A few of the drawer fronts were a little tight right off the miter saw, so a trip to the shooting board with the low angle jack plane made quick work of sizing everything up and making it fit. The drawer sides bottom and back are made of poplar that was resawn to 3 8 of an inch thick. The sides are all ripped to the proper width and then cut to length at the table saw. 
the drawer sides are going to be held to the fronts using an interlocking dado joint that's created at the table saw. This is the first time I've made this type of joint, but it works pretty well and I'll uh, probably use it more in the future. First, a quarter inch groove is cut into the sides of the drawer front. Then the saw blade is lowered and the fence is set a quarter inch away from the blade and a groove is created in the drawer sides. After that, I'll do a quick test fit to make sure the two grooves fit into each other. After I fine tune the fit a little bit, I will go ahead and repeat the process for the sides of all 12 drawers. Next, the little material needs to be taken off the back of each drawer front so that the sides interlock with them properly. Here I'm creating a rabbit at the bottom of each drawer front to accept the bottom. I'll do this with just making two passes with the table saw. Over at the miter saw, I'll cut the back and the bottom to size. And now everything's ready to be glued up. I'll start by gluing the sides to the front and clamping everything into place. The boards uh, got a little bit of bow to them, so the clamps were necessary here. Next, the back can be slid into place, and then some more glue applied and the bottom put on. The back and the bottom are only held on with some pin nails and some glue, but that's plenty strong enough for these little drawers. Once the glue's had some time to dry, I can start fitting the drawers to the case. I'll do this with a hand plane by just removing a little bit of material from the sides and the bottom until I get a good tight fit. Uh, making sure that the pin nails I installed earlier are down far enough that I don't hit them with the plane blade. The next step is to go over the drawer fronts and the case sides with some 220 grit paper and a sanding block to get the project ready for finish. To give the cherry a really rich and dark look, I used two coats of boiled linseed oil. I wiped one coat on and then let it sit for 3-4 hours and then wiped another coat. After the boiled linseed oil had some time to soak in, I added two coats of a wiping varnish that I made using equal parts of uh, mineral spirits, polyurethane, and some more boiled linseed oil. The back of the case is made from quarter inch birch plywood and I'll cut everything out at the table saw, apply some glue to the rabbit in the back of the case, and secure the board in with some brad nails. I'm installing some pulls that I picked up on Amazon and to make sure I get them centered on all 12 drawers and they all look the same when I'm done, I created a little template to uh, mark out the locations I need to drill. Once I've laid out and drilled the pilot holes for each one of the drawer fronts, I'll come back and install the poles. The cabinet's going to hang on the wall and I didn't have much room in the back, so I picked up this low profile French cleat from Amazon. I like using the French cleat system because it's easy to install and easy to put the cabinet on the wall by myself. And that's it for this project. I really love how the pulls turned out and the rich look of the cherry. I hope you guys liked the video, and if you did, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks.